Okay, here we are today with Stanley Hill in his balloon car again. He's from Grand Island, New Jersey, New York, rather, excuse me. And as you can see, he has very interesting and delicate work with bone of all animals, antlers. today at the festival uh, with bone carving with Stanley R. Hill from Grand Island, New York. Uh, Stan, how did you get interested in bone carving? I came purely by accident. I uh, was working with steel all my life and uh, I just wanted to fool around with something. Mm -hmm. Picked up a piece of bone and start working and uh, as a result, after about two years of work, are you teaching younger people uh, around you, yourself? Uh, uh, people, no, no, no. This is a personal, personal uh, art for you, uh, yeah. self uh, benefit. Yeah. Um, where do you collect all your antlers and things like that? Well, uh, different parts of the country. Wherever I meet someone who has uh, antlers that they don't need, I either trade or buy them. Mm -hmm. And I go hunting myself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I noticed some of your objects, uh, you, you have your, your feelings behind each individual object. Um, they're they're uh, more like a self feeling to yourself then, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, every carving I know by heart, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, while I'm doing it, I do have a... Uh, uh, I can't explain it. It's a, it's a separate thing from anything I've ever had. Uh, as I do these carving. Yeah. Um... Question in my mind, I gotta find. Um, like, say, for instance, the eagle dancer. This is, um, how'd you come about the feeling for it? Well, an eagle dancer amongst all us on the end has been quite significant throughout the years. So that's my version of it. I just wanted to, to, to do an eagle dancer. Uh, there's no, no real uh, reason for it, don't I just felt like that. Mm -hmm. That's the Ollie's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Um, What are these uh, little figures in the lower end of the eagle dancer? Well, that's their, uh, uh, the false face. Uh, they're uh, a variation of the hair for a false face that we mm -hmm. hair for a man. Yeah, um, I see the arrowheads and combs. And things and things like that. Most of the, um, things that you can do with your bone work is useful in many ways. I oh yeah, I can I can even even with the, the small pieces. Mm -hmm. well, this one here, I gave this to my wife for Mother's Day. I belong to the turtle clan. Mm -hmm. So I did this one project specific with something specific in mind. Uh, this represents uh, myself, the turtle, and my wife is the uh, beaver, mm -hmm. and these are our four children. And you notice I put those beavers all on her tail, which occasionally the little beavers do uh, right on their mother's tail. Yeah. So that's what that means. That's one of the carvings that does have some meaning behind it. Very fine work, then. Um, You'll notice this. Are you about to eat? Hi, ladies and gentlemen. We are here. Um, so we are at the festival of American folk life with William Commander, and um, he is going to explain to us on how he goes about making his canoes for his people. William. Um, first of all, uh, we are the Algonquin from the north. Mm -hmm. Northern of Ottawa, we live uh, approximately 90 miles from the uh, capital city uh, of Canada. Um, and we, uh, what we're doing here now, um, as you see, yeah. uh, we are securing all that the, uh, where the knot was seen on the tree of the, the bird, mm -hmm. and we put about always. I outside, and it's eliminated. 
with the other bark. Other words, this is a glue. Mm -hmm. But the picture that we use that we mix it uh, more fat and also berry. Yeah. And uh, to soften the gum so it will be flexible. Mm -hmm. So it won't crack if you walk on the snow. It, it's just going to be a uh, Festival and uh, nothing will uh, uh, will leak. Mm -hmm. Um, when I'm, what type of wood is this in here? The cross, the cross members. The, the cross pieces, uh, they are uh, uh, ash, white ash. Mm -hmm. And uh, the side pieces here are cedar. And uh, the tongue, all the, the as you see here. It's a root from a, a white fruit, white fruit. Some prefer to use uh, jack pine. They're mm -hmm. longer, but I found <coughs> jack pine it's, it's more brittle than, than the white fruit. Mm -hmm. We also use uh, black, black fruit fruit also, yeah. which is good. Um, but they're, they're shorter roots. The you have to use boil to find it. That's too far in time. It's just part of the root. I've noticed um, on, on the side you have different thicknesses. Or, um, is that because of the tree that comes off, the way it comes off? Uh, what do you mean, the thicknesses? I mean, like, in, in the... Oh, this is, this, this bark you see down here, yes. from the very hand, and the, the very hand, I would tell you, that's only one piece of bark. Oh. It's, uh, it's no two pieces. It's all in one piece. Uh huh. This is uh, the rest of them from there. I'll, uh, I could turn this over and show you the bottom. Uh, the so, as you see, it's all in one piece of bark. Mm. It's not two pieces. But this coloring you see here is because it's been wet, mm -hmm. rain or something. Moist. And uh, after I wet this bar here, it will become this color also. Mm. It will be, it'll be this color. And then we'll be designing on it. Design, uh, and your designs mean, um, mixing designs mean to your own beliefs. To your own uh, no, we, we put our animals that we live in. Yeah, we in your uh, we we put the the bears the uh, the bear on it because mm -hmm. we eat bears up there mm -hmm. and uh, first the the main the main uh, meat is is moose mm -hmm. and we got we got a few deer too uh -huh. but the uh, deer meat uh, we you call that here I think is uh, uh, another name eh uh, mm -hmm. a deer uh, in our language we call it ouya. In, yes, the the in English language they call it yeah. uh, a different uh, a different name. Uh. Yeah. Uh, 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 your ego is it, it changed. Mm. And you prefer uh, to eat fish. Mm -hmm. You could eat fish every day. You mm -hmm. don't get tired. Yeah. But most meat is the same thing. You could eat most meat three times a day, twelve months a year. You never get tired of it. Yeah. It, it, that's just like uh, just like the at home. We always eat in contrast with uh, uh, and uh, fish. Um, I was going to ask, how do you make your forms? Um, the yeah. form we, we we form it on the stake on the ground mm -hmm. as uh, just like old times. And once we lift it, we we put these here. Everything is tied. Then we take off the the the, the, the peg mm -hmm. and then lift it up. Then we we form the the, the ribs inside afterwards. Mm -hmm. Then we put a binder a binder um, inside with the yeah. uh, yeah. Um, could you show us some, you know, some of the stuff that you do in making this meat? I do everything. I mean, could you I mean, show us so our viewers could see you actually working upon this meat? Uh, little, you know, little things, what you would be doing. Well, we do the, all the, 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 the,
Mondig a matkabb, hogy baj így. Na, mi az úr? Ezt tudom, hogy a matkabb. De most nem mondom, hogy túl hatott volna. As you see up there, there is a, there's a, this cedar here is made, is made around this way. Mm -hmm. And this would be getting on. And our pieces will get the end of that. We, we shoot always the, the, the widest. Is it Mokka Monastery? Mokka Dagana? As you notice, these yeah. people are all together on their um, preparations on making this canoe. They all help each other in doing these things. They're very, um, very good with their craft, as you can notice. Is there a name for you guys? Uh, like notice uh, these are these are handmade, yeah? Mm -hmm. We we make these knives out of file or uh, a craft saw, and uh, we just split it and uh, you could either soften it in the fire mm -hmm. and then get it uh, hardened up again uh, uh, after you just cook it. Mm -hmm. And you, you, then you put it back in the fire to get just about the right color, and you put it on the fat. The fat that we have here, yes. the same thing, metal fat, you know, yes. and then the, it, it hardens. It tempers it then. It tempers it. And you try with the file. A place is split, uh, you say it would be a glass. It's so, it's so hard. Mm -hmm. then, uh, then you keep on putting on the fire a little bit, then you, 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 you try with another file. Yeah. Uh, then it's part of the kit, then you leave it alone. All you do is you use the, the stone then. Yeah. Very good. Mano, me diz que não, mas... Mano, me diz que não. Mano, me diz que não. Excuse me, William, why do you do this? Is this your family? This is my son and this is my wife. Mm -hmm. That's, that's Mary and her son. Mary and son. Yeah. I thought his name is Sonny. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have uh, one great grandchildren. Apparently, night before last, uh, we got a call. That's uh Okay, you see that come on, I'm not gonna I want you know. I mean I'm so exhausted. So he's me, Mr. Nair's not in good off the new office. 
So uh, that's part of uh, starting to, to finish like that. Mm -hmm. eh? And we'll put we'll put more, 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 more out here and more ribs until we finish up the hand also. Yeah. And uh, we do this up to here. Then we start the other end. Yeah. And uh, and that's the uh,
still in touch very well, so we recorded the message. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll introduce you to the one of the Okay, uh, the Okay, uh, the Okay, Washington, D.C. or... Uh, no, sir. So far as what I can gather from what they told us, that we wouldn't be as considered in doing a bicentennial project because our particular group don't feel like we should be celebrating a bicentennial or something like that. There was a question that we might not even... This is uh, Jesse Wilson, who is a Tuscarora from New York State and is the director of the Native American Center in Niagara Falls. Um, could you tell us about the sculptural pieces, uh, Mr. Wilson? Yes, I started doing sculpting in 1969 when I happened to be in the state of North Carolina where we uh, come across this stone. And I took some of it home and started working on it and developed myself into a carver. Previous to that, I'd never done any carving or went to school for so all the things that you see here on the table are my own uh, ideas. They are not copies of anything. They are things that pertain to the Iroquois culture, uh, particularly this object in the middle, which has a lot of history and a lot of stories to it. You'll notice the uh, most of the pieces have faces on, and I have this uh, feeling about doing objects with faces, and you can see quite a bit of faces in these different things. These pieces uh, are kind of what I have left out of approximately 800 pieces that I've done uh, since 1969. I carve very fast because I usually take the shape of the stone and work something from that, so that means I don't have to shape to a square stone to a round one or a round one to a square one. And if you'll notice on these pieces, you see their original shape, particularly this one here. Could you uh, possibly hold that piece and show us? Uh, I can probably tell you the story about this piece, in that <coughs> you'll see a man's face underneath here, whom we call Turidaho, and he has snakes for his hair. At the beginning of the formation of the Iroquois Confederacy, Turidaho was a very evil man, and so evil was he that he had snakes for his hair. But when the Confederacy was formed, formed into a peaceful uh, government, and they took the name of Turidaho, and today one of the highest titles of the Six Nation Confederacy is Turidaho. And today he no longer has snakes for his hair. He's a person like me and you, has good ideas and so on. But I do a lot of these pieces because they look nice when they're finished, and, and the title of Turidaho means something to me. 
On the bottom, you, you'll see a wampum belt design. Wampum belts, of course, you can see in these learning centers that wampum belts are indicative of the Iroquois culture. This object also has a foot on here. You see uh, what, what we call Bigfoot or, or uh, Sasquatch and, and some of the other tribes. I had a personal experience with Bigfoot. I had made contact with this man at one time on our reservation, and we had this, this very large person that appears every so often, so it automatically comes out in a lot of my sculpture of a foot on there, and that's like the legend of Bigfoot or whatever. Mm -hmm. These smaller pieces, uh, again, you'll see a face on here. This is a cornhusk face. You may see a cornhusk mask throughout this exhibit someplace. Another one of a false face. You see all these faces that all indicate Iroquois. They're all Iroquois-type faces. This piece over here on the corner is a flying head, which again is a legend among the Iroquois people. Flying heads that flew around. This is like very early legend. And this is a flying head, so you'll see objects that pertain to flying heads, the Tudadaho or, or eagles. Eagles are one of my favorite pieces that I do. Even though they may look modern, that's the way the stone is, so that's the way the eagle comes out. The stone coming from North Carolina is called theophyte. Uh, the stone that's, that's hard yet soft enough to carve or soft yet hard enough to be an object when it's finished. And these stones come from all one spot, and what I like about it is that it has a variety of colors. As you can see, a whole variety of colors coming from the same pile of stone. Yes. Could you tell us what type of stone it is? It's, uh, it's called steatite, and in North Carolina there's probably uh, ten different forms of steatite and probably seven or eight different colors, and I just happen to find this one location, and I prefer to use this stone because I've become accustomed to it now. This stone over here on the table, this is uh, soapstone. This is not one of my pieces with the red on, but it comes from Quebec, and you can see the difference in that stone and this here. I prefer working in these browner stones because they have the more earth color or more natural colors to them. What type of tools do you use yeah. when you work with uh, sculptural pieces? Actually, I, uh, most of the time when I get uh, old files and little chisels, I make my own tools to work with, and uh, I find that it works better because in some of these things you'll see little specks. That's iron, iron pyrites in there. And unless you have a good tool, you continually dull your tools because of that iron. And uh, so most of my chisels and little knives and stuff, I, I make my own tools. What, is, what are your plans in the, in the future in terms of your sculptural pieces? Well, since uh, we opened the Native American Center in Niagara Falls in 1975, I've become very busy with that center, which means that I don't sculpt as much as I used to, or probably as much as I should. But uh, I've had classes in Niagara Falls, uh, teaching other Indian people who I know have a talent, and they are taking on the sculpture world among Iroquois people, and some of them are making very good living from uh, the kinds of things that I've done, and so now maybe I'm on to another, another field of uh, running an Indian center, and I become very busy there, and I don't really sculpt as much as I should. I see. Um, is there anything else uh, with your sculptural forms that you think uh, you could talk about, or you feel are important that people who see your work should know? Well, in 1973, they had the. Uh, Sculpture won contest at the Herb Museum in Phoenix. And they uh, sent me a letter and asked me to put an object in there. And uh, up to that point, I never did compete for any prizes. And uh, I just make pieces and sell them as they sell. But I put one object into that show, and it won the grand prize award, uh, gold medal, and $2,500 uh, for the piece that I put in there. And again, it was the title of Tudadaho, because, like I mentioned, I like doing those pieces. Uh, the Department of the Interior Arts and Crafts Board has, uh, I'd say, probably most of my best pieces. The Arts and Crafts Shop at the Interior Building buys smaller pieces and they resell them. And my work can be seen in New York City at the uh, American Indian Center, at the Indian Museum Hall of Fame in uh, uh, Akron, Ohio, some places, uh, shops in Pennsylvania, Chicago, and Cleveland, different places. So 
normally I promote my own work or deal with those shops that I uh, sell stuff to. So my carvings are in those places, and uh, individual buyers from all over the country, all over the world, have bought in pieces from me. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Wilson. I think your work is very incredible, and uh, thank you again for taking the time to tell us more about the sculptural pieces. Right. One, two, one, two. They're going to get off of them. You got them before they fall. One, two, three. One, two, three. Testing. One, two, three. That's good. This is our end. And, um, like, say, for instance, the real dancer. This is, um, how'd you come about the feeling for it? 
Well, the legal dancer amongst all of them has been quite significant to our career. So that's my version of it. I just wanted to, to, to do a legal answer. Uh, there's no, no real uh, reason for it, do I? I just felt like that. Mm -hmm. That's the Ollie's mm -hmm. type um, what are these uh, little figures in the lower end of that eagle dancer? Well, that's their, uh, uh, the false face. Uh, they're uh, a variation of the air for a false face, at least, mm -hmm. for a man. Yeah, um, I see the arrowheads and cones. And things and things like that. Most of the, um, things that you can do with your bone work is useful in many ways. Like, oh, yeah. I can, I can even, even with the, the small pieces. Mm-hmm. Well, this one here, I gave this to my wife for Mother's Day. I belong to the turtle clan. Mm -hmm. So I did this. Yep, hey, here we are today with Stanley Hill and his bone car again. He's from Grand Island, New Jersey, New York, rather, excuse me. And as you can see, he has very interesting and delicate work with bone of all animals, antlers. Uh, here we are today at the festival uh, with bone carving with Stanley R. Hill from Grand Island, New York. Uh, Stan, how did you get interested in bone carving? It came purely by accident. Uh, I was working with steel all my life, and uh, I just wanted to fool around with something, mm -hmm. picked up a piece of bone. One project specific with something specific in mind. Uh, this represents uh, myself, the turtle, and my wife is a uh, beaver, mm -hmm. and these are our four children. You notice I put the beavers all on her tail, which occasionally the little beavers do uh, right on their mother's tail. Yeah. So that's what that means. That's one of the carvings that does have some meaning behind it. Very fine work, then. Um, you notice this? Yeah. <laughs> Are you about to do? Hi, ladies and gentlemen. We are here. Um, so we are at the festival of American folk life with William Commander, and um, he is going to explain to us on how he goes about making his canoes for his people. William. Um, first of all, uh, we are the Algonquins from the north. Mm -hmm. Northern of Ottawa, we live uh, approximately 90 miles from the uh, capital city uh, of Canada. Um, and we, uh, what we're doing here now, um, as you see, yeah. uh, we are securing all that the, where the knot was seen on the tree of the, the birds, mm -hmm. and we put the bars always I the side and it's eliminated with the other bark. Other words, it is a glue. Mm -hmm. But it's a picture that we use that we mix with uh, more fat and also berries. Yeah. And uh, to soften the gum so it will be flexible. Mm -hmm. So it won't crack if you walk on the canoe. It, it's just going to be uh, flexible and uh, nothing will... Uh, uh, we'll leave. Mm -hmm. Um, when I'm with him, that working, and, uh, as a result, after about two years of work, mm -hmm. are you teaching younger people, uh, around you, yourself, uh, uh other people? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. This is a personal, personal, uh, art for you, uh, yeah. self, uh, benefit. Yeah. Um, where do you collect all your antlers and things like that? Well, uh, different parts of the country, wherever I meet someone who has uh, antlers that they don't need, I either trade or buy them. Mm -hmm. And I go hunting myself. Yeah. Uh, 
I noticed some of your objects, uh, you have this, your feelings behind each individual object. Um, you're you're uh, more like a self feeling to yourself then, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, every carving I know by heart, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, while I'm doing it, I do have a... a, a I can't explain it. It's a, it's a separate thing from anything I've ever had uh, as I do these carvings. Yeah. Uh, um, question in my mind. I